I want this again. 24-7 hype for the new Pokemon game. Constant trailers and a reveal can happen at any time. And I'm getting those vibes from the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailer. I don't know why. Maybe it's just that the trailer is overly saturated and reminds me of the Alola region, or maybe it's because this game has so much to offer that it's possible. It's possible to just crank it to 10 and not let go until November when this game releases, and it's still, like, because it's an open world game, you can't spoil too much. And maybe this is a big generation with 90 new Pokemon, so we can get a new Pokemon, or not even a new Pokemon, a batch of new Pokemon every two weeks and still keep people excited for the game. It's just the way that Pokemon Sun and Moon did it hint different. And since then, it really feels like we get a new trailer, everyone immediately forgets about the game for a month and a half, and then we get another trailer, and it's just alright, and that's just kind of how it goes. But Pokemon Sun and Moon, like, it's a shame that the website has to be archived because it's been, like, closed and now it's just like, oh, here's our Pokemon Sun and Moon game. But everything about how Pokemon Sun and Moon went, it was just non-stop excitement. Koro Koro could give us some major information, the website could update, trailer at 6am, and then sometimes just straight information out of the blue, while we also had the Giga Leak of the starter Pokemon going back to, like, June or May or something. But even when you look at the individual trailers, they hit just right at the right time. May 10th. Early-ish May. And we got the starter reveal. Now, we already got the starters, and we did get the star starters early for Pokemon Sword and Shield. But, I mean, we can get new Pokemon reveals. After that, boom. June 2nd. We got Sogalio, Lunala. We get to see the legendary Pokemon. And because of this open world game, and the logos, and just where the game is going, no one knows. What's up with the legendaries? Why does the game have an orange and grape theme? And how do you spin that into legendary Pokemon for a Spain region? Also, it's open world. And everything about it's beautiful. And I just want to see more and more of this. Like, what is the gimmick as well? You know, we've seen Z-moves. We saw SOS battles. All these other things for Pokemon Sun and Moon. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Gigantamax. That was shown early on. And Gigantamax ended up being a great gameplay feature for the wild area. But how do you spice it up? Where do you go for open world when it comes to this? And we've already seen that the opening, well not even the opening part, just the non-gameplay part of this trailer has a lot of teases. Is this going to be a core for the new cycle? And does that mean the new cycle begins earlier? You know, what if, what if we get the legendary reveal in late April? I'm okay with that. You can't give too much information too soon for me when it comes to hype. Like, I, I'm not so spoiled that I need anything for March. This can keep me going until then. But, like, what happens when it starts kicking up? Definitely by May, June, E3 and COVID weirdness is a thing. But, I mean, like, yeah, big E3, or, like, not E3S, yes, but summer presentation. And then after that, every two weeks, we're going to be getting some kind of crazy new information. It's like we saw it, and it just works so well. It's like, all right, what do we got? We got gameplay and legendary Pokemon. We got, gen like, the first generation Pokemon reveals at E3 live straight into the trailer. Um, we have just legendary Pokemon. I, like, yeah, more legendary Pokemon, more Pokemon revealed. It's even called more Pokemon revealed. You go through and watch it, and this was it. Like, every two weeks, new Pokemon appearing, more things to be excited about. We've already seen the map. We're dissecting all the little information. We're trying to see where the game goes, trying to see where the story goes. And I think that's another good thing. That even though the fake leaks were egregious for Pokemon Sun and Moon, or at least Generation 7, so bad that Tyrantar 2 was like, yeah, I scummed it up pretty bad back then. It, it leaves less room, because what ended up happening is that, like, leaks were almost immediately BTFO'd by the Pokemon company when a trailer would come out. It's like, oh, that just proves everything that was just said to be fake. But then when there's too much dead air, when there's too much space in between, then people are just way too desperate for fake leaks and fake information. And we saw a lot of that with Pokemon Legends as well as Pokemon Sword and Shield. So I find it ironic how people are like, ew, Pokemon Sun and Moon spoiled too much, even though it turned out to be, like, some of the best-selling 3DS games ever because the promotion just kept people so hype. It was really that the games themselves kind of disappointed, but the overall launch was like the strongest we've ever seen in Pokemon. I feel like the launch for Pokemon Sun and Moon was even stronger than Pokemon Sword and Shield because everyone was so excited. So people are like, ew, it revealed too much, but then we see that leaks outperform in, Sun and, or in Sword and Shield Arceus because people can't get enough information about the new games to really start falling for fake information. So I'd rather the Pokemon company just 
not allow any of those shenanigans to last very long. And even then, it's like, yeah, we got new Pokemon. After this, you bounce on over to the website, you get all of your details, and this was where it was right before the game launched and, like, showed all of the Pokemon. But overall, that's not too bad in retrospect. Like, I just see a lot of Pokemon I'm excited for, a lot of hype stuff. Generation 7, very strong generation. I would consider it one of the best for overall designs. Very few Generation 7 Pokemon I did not like. Yeah, Crabrawler and Sandcastle was stupid, and the Bounce Suite evolutionary line never really sold me. But after that, there's some real bangers in here, like Type Null, Silvalli, Lycanroc. I uh, wasn't a big fan of Gumshoes and stuff, which is kind of a shame because it's our, like, generational rat Pokemon. But overall, it's like, yeah. When I was seeing this, I'm like, these designs aren't terrible. I'm actually optimistic. This is really cool how everything in Alola is coming together. And I feel like it could be even better with what we saw with Pokemon Sword and Shield and what we're seeing with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Because Pokemon Sword and Shield, they embraced what it means to be a Pokemon trainer. The entire culture revolves around Pokemon battling and glorifying and even sponsoring, like, you know, monetizing Pokemon battles. And I, I really like that because it's cool when you see these representations, like in Pokemon Generations, Pokemon Twilight Wings, or more when the anime transition to the games are like, this is what it's like. This is what it's like to live in the Pokemon world. And I feel like there's a lot you can show for that in the trailers. You just kind of keep everyone excited for the games that's coming out and just make sure it's on the ra radar. Make sure that this is where Pokemon is going to be going for the future and bring Pokemon back like we've never seen before. I feel like this has that XY Pokemon Renaissance potential, but when you have over 100 million Switch users, and it's going to be even more than that, 110, 120, are, are 3 million people going to buy a Switch just for this? Are they finally going to go into it? Do we have record-breaking sales like we can't even imagine? You know, Pokemon Sword and Shield's around 22 million units. I feel like Pokemon... Uh, Scarlet and Violet can pull 30 million in its first year. This could be like the Animal Crossing New Horizons of Pokemon, the ultimate, definitive, best Pokemon game that brings people that haven't cared about Pokemon in so long into the series. Because we saw that Pokemon Legends didn't do that, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Like, we can just kind of look at the sales and see everything is about the same. Because when you look at the sales of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, 14 million units, so even for like crazy Sinnoh remakes, you didn't get all the old school fans back. You didn't get the Diamond and Pearl peeps back into Pokemon. Pokemon Legends, the sales are dropping off hard. So Pokemon Legends, even though it had like a strong launch, that's just all pre-orders and initial stuff. But now that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has been released, or not released, announced and shown to be immeasurably better than Pokemon Legends, effectively confirming that Pokemon Legends is the trash tech demo compared to what the future of Pokemon holds, I don't see the sales getting any better. So... Yeah, Pokemon Legends around 14 million, even though the internet made it seem like that's the god direction for where Pokemon needs to go. Didn't really happen, Pokemon Let's Go, didn't get a lot of Pokemon Go conversion. Pokemon Sword and Shield been stuck around 20-ish million units for a while. Breath of the Wild has surpassed it. There was a time where Pokemon Sword and Shield was ahead of Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild took off because this is the definitive Zelda game. This is the definitive Smash game, Animal Crossing game. So we need to see Pokemon actually do that. If not, it's just stagnating. That it's the same people that buy the games no matter what, with a couple of extras, maybe? And that's not really good, because Pokemon hasn't been growing where everything else is growing. And I, I'm kind of, like, disappointed to see if the Pokemon company seems to be content. It's like, ah, we're still putting up good enough numbers, so there we go. But they're not exceeding those expectations anymore. The general gaming community is not having it when it comes to Pokemon. That, look at this, we, you know, unbelievable what 15 years of gaming evolution looks like. And, yeah, Pokemon Legends are just unacceptable. 91,000 more upvotes than downvotes. Like, that's... That kind of puts it into perspective right there. That's a significant amount of people. And also with Elden Ring coming out, yeah, that just trashes on Pokemon Legends and it just makes Pokemon look bad. Um, some of the other, other controversies, you know, Pokemon Sword and Shield just didn't like, have that kick, have that punch to it, but with this, like, this, not this, uh, where is that trailer? With this, I feel like it can do it. It's, it seems cliche, or maybe jumping the gun to be like, oh, this is the most excited I've ever been for a Pokemon game, just off of the first trailer, but when I saw Pokemon Sword and Shield, I was happy. I was just like, alright, Pokemon Switch, new generation, big main series game, looking good. Pokemon Sun and Moon, it all comes together for a brand new Pokemon adventure, like, I, that, that made me tear up. That that was way too much to take in at once. That was for as a Pokemon fan. 
I, I think the last time I was this excited for a Pokemon game was when I saw a Game Informer ad for Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver, and I went, Oh my god, this is gonna be the greatest thing ever. Still is the best Pokemon game to this day, and hopefully Pokemon Scarlet and Violet beats that, because, you know, we need, we need the next best Pokemon game at some point. And this just feels like it has everything, and is just honest and upfront about it, and hopefully is trying to catch everyone. Like, this is the ultimate modern Pokemon game, for everyone to get back into or even people that haven't found their way into Pokemon yet to finally start and finally become a Pokemon trainer. And I'm hoping like this this could be it, the one that beats Pokemon Red and Blue with 30 million sales and also just kind of keeps on going further and further for there from there and maybe brings back Pokemon like we've never seen before. But I don't know, and I think the key to that is the non-stop hype non-stop news cycle because some some of the views that that happened with this was were just incredible a lolan rattata z moves and a munchlax event ended up with 5 million views the starter pokemon reveal was 11 million and you don't get like one-to-one -one conversion of course and a lot of people rewatch the trailers but i mean uh i remember an article where it's like pokemon sun and moon shipped 11 million units on its first week or something so and they ended up getting, you know, 16, 17 million in the end. And I feel like we just kind of look at how all this played out. This is the way to go. You need to keep it turned up. Also, the YouTube algorithm was just better and made more sense back then. Pokemon was getting promoted and getting shown to the millions of people. And then that was, like, kind of going cool. So it's kind of crazy that the, po the YouTube algorithm is so broken that even, like, the official Pokemon YouTube channel, you can see it isn't hitting the same. And it's kind of struggling by comparison. But, I mean, even then, when you just go into any of the other videos uh the starter reveal so we got second evolutions and then full evolutions 7.8 million views oh we got that in the background uh six million views people were excited people wanted this and then there were just non-stop features the festival plaza super awesome would have had a lot more value if it wasn't for like immediate hacking and stuff I'd rather not disappoint myself on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, how that game's going to get destroyed by hacking like every other Pokemon game, unless it, unless Game Freak decides this is where they crack down. But, yeah. Um, I want this. I want, I want, to, I'm, well, not even I want this. I'm happy that I'm feeling this ready again. I'm ready to go 24-7 from the next trailer until the game comes out. No sleep, only hype, and... This is going to beat Pokemon Sun and Moon for sure anyway, so it's going to be better than it was last time around, and I, ho I hope it actually is better than last time around. I hope this this opportunity is not squandered. So if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.